The largest and deadliest concentration camp of the Second World War was Auschwitz. What began as a former Polish army barracks became a huge site of execution and killing. Throughout its time in operation, at least 1.3 million prisoners passed throughout the gates and over 1.1 million prisoners were killed there. Many people were sent straight to the gas chambers as soon as they arrived from the transports. And those who were not gassed often died through disease, starvation, executions, beatings and exhaustion. The inmates were forced to work incredibly hard, and they were given poor rations, and they also had to contend with violent and brutal SS guards. Many infamous guards such as Irma Grazer and Elizabeth Falkenrath worked at Auschwitz, and after World War II they were sentenced to death and were executed for their crimes. But there were a number of men who were responsible for the running of the camp, and also specific elements of Auschwitz. These were known as the Camp Commandants, and many of them were considered today to have been some of the most evil men who worked inside of the concentration camp system. But who were they, and what happened to them after the war? One of them especially was executed on a specifically built gallows inside of Auschwitz, as former inmates petitioned for him to die at the place he inflicted such misery. Join us today as we look at the compelling executions of the Commandants of Auschwitz, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The most infamous name involved in the running of Auschwitz was Rudolf Hurs, who was the longest serving commandant of the site. He oversaw its mass expansion and served in the capacity of the commandant from the 4th of May 1940 to November 1943, and then again on the 8th of May 1944 to the 18th of January 1945. He was the one who was sent to specific parts of Poland to investigate the creation of the camp, and he stated he went to Auschwitz to do things differently, and his ultimate goal was to create a camp that was more efficient in its killing and production than other sites such as Dachau and Sachsenhausen. Whilst there he lived in a large villa with his wife and five children, and it was he who implemented the brutal regime there. He ordered the creation of Block 11, the punishment block, and Hearst also created standing cells to torture inmates, and he would at times condemn numbers of random prisoners to death by starvation there, if just one person escaped. He was told by Himmler to sanction the final solution and to carry it out, and Auschwitz was chosen for one of the main hubs of mass murder. Hearst said no one was allowed to speak about these matters with any person, and that everyone promised upon his life to keep the utmost secrecy. The purpose of Auschwitz was a site of mass murder, and Hearst began to test and perfect the methods of mass killing from September 1941. His experiments led to Auschwitz becoming the most efficient site of mass murder used in the final solution, and each day thousands were being killed. He stated, technically it wasn't so hard, it would not have been hard to exterminate even greater numbers. The killing itself took the least time. You could dispose of 2,000 heads in half an hour, but it was a burning that took all of the time. The killing was easy, you didn't even need guards to drive them into the chambers. They just went in expecting to take showers, and instead of water we turned on poison gas. The whole thing went by very quickly. He settled on Zyklon B to kill thousands. It was Hearst who employed many brutal guards who were truly sadistic. But he then had an alleged affair with an inmate in 1942, and she became pregnant, but this affair led to Hearst briefly losing command of Auschwitz. He returned later to oversee Operation Hearst, which saw 430,000 Hungarian Jews transported to the camp and killed in 56 bloody days. He was in charge of this brutal mission, and they could not keep up with the killing. But after the war he tried to evade capture, and managed to do so for a while, until he was arrested on the 11th of March 1946. Hearst tried to bite a Sinai capsule when he was discovered, but this did not work, and he was beaten inside of Allied captivity. Some soldiers battered him with axe handles, and he was then taken to testify at Nuremberg, but later was brought to trial himself. He spoke openly about his crimes and claimed he had killed two and a half million people, but he was then brought to trial again himself. He was sentenced to death on the 2nd of April 1947, and the death sentence was carried out next to the crematoria of the former Auschwitz I camp. He was taken back to the camp which he oversaw after appeals from former prisoners, and a gallows had specially been made for him. He was led up to the gallows by the executioner and other soldiers, before the noose was secured around his neck, and then the chair was kicked out from underneath him. The man who took over from Rudolf Hearst was Arthur Lieber Henschel. He continued the mass murder and executions, and claimed he made some improvements to camp life, 
For example, he removed the standing cells and also brought a halt to the selections of regular prisoners to go to the gas chambers. He was considered a quiet man who had a very poorly heart and he was very different to Rudolf Hearst and he did not want to disrupt the entire operation of Auschwitz. He was said to have lived a relatively quiet life despite being involved in the huge mass murder. He was seen as a man who was much more suited to a desk role, and despite people considering things did change for the better under his leadership, Lieber Henschel continued the executions in side block 11. He also called for the removal of the black wall where prisoners were executed upon and negotiated with elements of the camp's resistance. But ultimately thousands were dying each day from illness and malnutrition, and selections still took place with those inmates who came to the camp, and the new arrivals being sent straight to the gas chambers. One former inmate stated, Lieber Henschel went through the camp, inspecting all barracks, and I cannot recall whether he has ever ordered someone to be beaten, or he had beaten someone himself. Lieber Henschel was a lot softer than the others. Nonetheless, he was a criminal just like the others, and he took part in selections on the platform. But Lieber Henschel was relieved of his command as a camp commandant. Some claimed it was because he was married to a woman who had been charged with having links to Jews, but he was transferred to the already emptied Maidanet camp, as it had been evacuated due to Soviet advances. But at the end of the war he was arrested, and after he was taken prisoner by the Americans, he was then extradited to Poland to stand trial. Lieber Henschel was tried with crimes against humanity and was condemned to die for this. Along with 23 other defendants who were sentenced to death, at sunrise on the 24th of January 1948, he was hanged inside of Montelupich prison. He was led into the execution chamber, where a number of ropes hung from the ceiling, and a noose was then tied around his neck. He was stood on a chair, and then this was kicked out from underneath him, and he was left strangling, and his final words were long live Poland. Richard Bayer was the commandant of Auschwitz I from May 1944 to January 1945. He was a virulent SS man, and was seen as a brutal SS guard. He succeeded Lieber Henschel, as Himmler considered him to have been too soft on the prisoners, and Bayer was seen as an experienced commandant, who was capable of mass murder. He had done it before at Nürngammer, but he then served for a number of months, until the camp was dissolved at the start of 1945. He was responsible for mass execution and killing, and he kept Auschwitz as deadly as it had been previously, under the other commandants. But after the war he was never executed. He returned to Hamburg and settled working as a forestry worker, but was arrested in 1960. He was confronted and his identity was confirmed, but after admitting his true identity, he was held in prison awaiting his trial. As a former camp commandant of not just Auschwitz, but other sites, he would most probably have been executed, but he died of a heart attack whilst he was awaiting his trial in 1963. With Auschwitz being split into different complexes, Auschwitz I, Auschwitz II Birkenau and Auschwitz III Monowitz, there were different men in charge of the different parts of the camp. One man who was the commandant of Auschwitz Birkenau, the main extermination element of Auschwitz, was Fritz Hartstenstein. Here he oversaw the extermination facilities and also the crematoria, and was responsible for a huge amount of killing. He was later in 1944 appointed to the commandant of the Natzweiler concentration camp but after the Second World War he was arrested by the British for specifically being involved in the executions of four female agents of British Special Operations Executive. He was also tried for hanging a prisoner of war who belonged to the Royal Air Force, and he was then sentenced to death, but was given a death sentence by a firing squad. But instead he was sent to France, to then be tried for his crimes at Natzweiler, but then whilst awaiting his execution, he died of a heart attack on the 20th of October 1954 in Paris, at the age of 49. Known as the Beast of Belsen, Josef Kramer's arrest was covered by the world's media when Bergen-Belsen concentration camp was liberated. But Kramer was the former commandant of Natzweiler and he was then promoted and transferred to Auschwitz to Birkenau to become the camp commander there. He was involved in the mass gassings of new transports and was brought there for that purpose. There were many witnesses who said he took part in selections and he himself loaded people onto the trucks and beat them when they refused to get on the convoys. He was known for being a brute and a savage guard, and he had little remorse for anyone. He was later transferred to Belsen, where the conditions there broke down, and he gained his nickname the Beast of Belsen, for his harsh rule there. Despite no gas chambers, thousands died from the conditions. He was sentenced to death at the Belsen trial, 
and the court was told of his selections and roles at Auschwitz that inflicted so much death and suffering. For this he was then hanged by British executioner Albert Pierpoint on the 13th of December 1945. Initially sent to Auschwitz to work in the administration offices of the camp, Heinrich Schwartz became an adjutant of Rudolf Hirsch. But through different promotions, he was given command of Auschwitz III Monowitz, the huge slave labour IG Farben factory. In this role, he forced prisoners to work incredibly hard, and he instigated brutal working conditions that resulted in the deaths of up to 35,000 people. Those who were not fit enough to work were sent straight to the gas chambers and were killed. He worked here for two years, before he then took command of Mittelbau Dora, where the V2 rocket was being made. However, he was then arrested and at the end of the war was convicted of war crimes and crimes against humanity by French authorities. He was sentenced to death and was then shot by a firing squad on the 20th of March 1947. All of the men who served as the commandants of Auschwitz ultimately were responsible for the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people. They were also responsible for the evil rules and violence that the guards inflicted upon the prisoners, and for this, many were ultimately sentenced to death. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.